welcome back to my channel. I'm Felisa and today I'm going to show you some unique experiences starting with dining with alpacas in Taiwan. Afterwards, we'll also check out a temple that is completely made out of seashells. Then we'll go eat some all-you-can-eat hot pot and some traditional Taiwanese-Japanese teppanyaki. We're in Sanzi, which is about an hour drive away from Taipei City. You could experience both these places in a day. Sanzi District is by Yangming San, one of the nine national parks of Taiwan, and is at the northernmost point of the island. Today, we're going to David and Alpaca Cafe. The owner brought the alpacas back from Peru. They're able to live in Taiwan due to the temperature on the mountain. However, the owner said that they will usually blast AC or the fan around the alpacas, especially in the summer. Alpacas in the restaurant roam freely and you can pet them. There are also goats, deers, and savannah cats as well. The cats are in an enclosed space. Deers and goats are in an enclosure, but you can feed them. Feed for the animals are free. If you dine at the restaurant, the food is included. If not, it is $120 for an entry fee. We hung out with the alpacas and the owner would hand us carrots to feed the alpacas. Sometimes they'll try to nibble on your shirt or get your attention for more carrots, but they won't bite you. You can also pet the alpaca's neck area. They weren't smelly and felt like soft rug fur. If you plan on visiting, you can hire a car, take a taxi, or there are plenty of public transportation available. But of course, that will increase your travel time and you will be going up a mountain. Since we decided to go to the Seashell Temple afterwards, which is an hour drive away, I'd recommend getting a car, taxi, or even a scooter. There are lots of tables at the restaurant. We chose a table in the back where the AC and fan were blasting since it was a hot day. And you'll see later that this area turns out to be the alpaca's favorite as well. This cafe is known for its expensively priced food. The Lucky Bear Hot Pot is made out of pumpkin bouillon, which starts at 380 to 480 Taiwanese dollars, depending on the meat. And drinks are at least 170 Taiwanese dollars. It's so cute and everyone orders this dish to take photos of the bear. The alpacas decided to join us as well. It was also very delicious and I really enjoyed the hot pot. I also ordered fried rice, soft shell crab, and German style pork trotter. I know in US dollars, this doesn't seem like much, but in Taiwan, these prices are a bit high when compared to the local Taiwanese food prices. But they are able to charge these prices due to arbitrage, its remote location, low competition in the area, and the main attractions, the alpacas. It took me many years to adjust to the US prices of things. And whenever I visit Taiwan or Asia now, it takes me a while to readjust and not exclaim how cheap everything is in Taiwan. This can be insensitive. I treated my family to this meal since my dad brought me here, knowing that I would love this experience. And it was such a treat for me to be able to give back to my parents who have done so much for me to get me to where I am today. I love that the apaca sat by our table the whole time. It felt like they were our security guards and were guarding our table all day. I think the funniest part of the day was when I was coming out of the bathroom and witnessing the apacas also using the bathrooms. I'm not going to comment too much about this, but take this as you will. They did clean up right afterwards, there were no smells, and we thought it was funny. But maybe you want to avoid sitting near the bathrooms. Overall, we loved the experience and would recommend this fun excursion to see the alpacas. Next, we go to the Seashell Temple, located in New Taipei City. The Seashell Temple is a 20-minute drive up the mountain from the main road. From the outside, it may not seem like much, but once you go up these stairs on the side, you'll see the temple that's made completely out of seashells. It's a bit difficult to get to if you don't have your own method of transportation. You could take a bus to the village and walk up the mountain, but that would be a really long walk. The small temple, which was completed in 1996, is said to be home to over 60,000 seashells and its construction took over two years to complete. The design of the temple is similar to other temples in Taiwan, but has a very ocean-like appearance thanks to the seashells and marine-related imagery making it seem almost as if you were visiting a temple under the water. Locals and street signs refer to the temple as the Seashell Temple, but it is actually named the Fu Fu Ding San Si. Fufu Ding Mountain Temple. Like all of Taiwan's temples, entrance is free of charge and you won't be hassled for donations. You will be asked though to burn some incense and pay respect at the main shrine if you want to enter the cave. That's what my family is doing here. My mom also told us to rub this for good luck and fortune, so we did. The main attraction of the temple is its 18 Arhat Cave, which is a man-made cave dedicated to the Arhats. The walls are lined with spiky white coral and there are several beautifully designed enclosures where shrines are set up. A walk through the cave doesn't take that long, but the tunnel is narrow and small. Even my mom, who's small, had a crouch. The temple is primarily dedicated to Buddhist monk and Qigong and the 18 Arhats. 
and as is common in Taiwan, is somewhat of a mixture of Buddhist and Chinese folk religion traditions. The 18 Arhats were the original disciples of the Buddha who followed his instructions and achieved enlightenment. The Arhats are popular figures within Buddhism and Chinese folk religion, and it is common to find their images in temples. The Arhats are thought to be tasked with preserving and spreading Buddhism throughout the land, and each of the monks are thought to have supernatural powers. Ji Gong spent quite a bit of his time helping the poor and standing up to injustice. The main shrine of the temple is dedicated to Ji Gong, but there are also a number of other Chinese folk religion deities, most notably including images of the Earth God at the entrance and exit of the cave that leads visitors behind the main shrine. There's also another seashell temple that's not too far away. We didn't go there, but here are the details. The front facade of the Taiwanese temple typically features beautifully strong carvings of lions and dragons, but at this temple, the stone carvings are replaced by seashell dragon pillars and sea dragon door guardians. The rest of the facade includes seashell lanterns and a seashell incest urn, as well as having images of marine life on the walls. Like most Taiwanese places of worship, the artistic design and the attention to detail put on display here is beautiful, but this one takes it to the next level. You could easily spend an hour looking at all this artistic detail of the front facade of the temple alone. I got a lot of the description off Go Team Josh's blog and I'll link it in the description. This was such a cool experience and even as a Taiwanese that visits temples regularly whenever she visits Taiwan, this one is definitely a cool one to see. Next, we are going to eat all-you-can-eat hot pot, which is a must in Taiwan. It's so affordable, delicious, and a must-do year-round, even in the summer. We're checking out Shangla Spicy Hot Pot. This is one of their new locations. All-you-can-eat hot pot usually has a time limit. Here, we had two hours to eat as much as we wanted. You can choose from different price points that determine the type and cuts of meat and whether it includes seafood. We love seafood, so we went with the meat and seafood option. Mala can be directly translated as numbing spicy fragrant pot. Yes, it is quite spicy and sometimes it is so spicy that your mouth goes numb. I always take a tour of the premises first to see what kinds of foods is available and where. There are so many desserts and ice cream brands. This can usually be found at all buffets in Taiwan. But first, we gotta get the ingredients to put in the hot pot. There are so many raw ingredients, you'll see different veggies, fish balls, meatballs, and noodles that you'll cook in your hot pot. And then we also have to make the sauce to dip the food in. This is my favorite pot part of hot pot. I always make mine super garlicky. Our tower made some seafood arrive and we chose the yin yang pot, which means you can get two soup bases. We got the mat la and the other a meat broth. You can add additional orders of meats and seafood off of an iPad that is next to your table. There are pictures of the food if you don't read Chinese and they provide cute bibs so you don't splash on your clothes. <laughs> The drink station is pretty robust as well, and there are tapioca balls to make your own boba tea, which was the first time I've seen this. This is such a fun meal to have with family and friends as you cook your own foods and you can choose what you want to eat. At the end of the meal, we wrap up with some coffee, desserts, coffee desserts, and ice cream. I was loving this Cold Stone brown sugar and mochi ice cream. It's so filling, but such a fun and yummy meal. I hope you enjoy some all-you-can-eat hot pot when you're in Taiwan. Last but not least, a traditional Taiwanese-Japanese teppanyaki meal. Located in First Hotel, we went to Maxim's Teppanyaki, which felt very retro and old school. I don't think these are as popular or showcased often, so I wanted to show a different type of meal that differs greatly from the US or around the world. Teppanyaki in Taiwan, unlike the US, the chefs here don't do tricks or throw eggs in the air. This type of meal is mostly popular amongst businessmen and women who bring clients, so it's very professional and quiet. We had a late lunch, so we were the last customers for the lunch time slot. Set menu prices range starting from 395 to 720 Taiwanese dollars, which is very affordable for all this food. My favorite was the fish, which was so flaky and soft. The steak topped with lots of garlic. There are lots of vegetables as well, so it feels like a well-rounded meal. At the end of the meal, you can get dessert. This is a red bean paste pancake and a slice of fruit. 
Hope you enjoyed these hidden gems of Taiwan. Let me know if you go to any of these spots and tell me in the comments what you think. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.